having said all that, what 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 I will usually do is um, I I have uh, this larger pig that I can demo and show you where things are at, which is an advantage. Uh, but then we have the smaller ones for you guys to dissect, which sometimes you can see things equally well or better, but they're also much quicker and easier to dissect. So that's why I'm kind of showing you the two different sizes. Um, it's amazing, you know, these are both like that equivalent of third term. This is just close to full term, you know, like what would equivalent nine months in a human, and this is probably closer to six, what would be six or seven months. That's how much growth happens in that third term of human pregnancy or the very end of the, in the case of the pigs, I don't know how long it is, three months or something last month. So, um, so we'll just take a look at this guy and then you can do your own small ones. Um, this, uh, all I want you to see this evening is basically what ha that, that, was that body cavity or chest and abdominal cavity and some of the main organs inside there and those serous linings you get that distinction between the outer tube or parietal part of the body and the inner tube or the visceral part. So of course this one's already been cut open. Um, what I would like you to be careful about on your little guys is <clears throat> when you first start cutting them, what, what's this? Yeah. Um, umbilical cord. I would like you not to cut straight through the umbilical cord, but you can cut back around it and to the sides, just like this, chook, chook. And then you can cut forward up to the diaphragm. You can do your best to try and keep the diaphragm in place, so you would cut off to the sides there, and that will give you some nice flaps to open up the abdominal cavity, just like I've done here. And then we open up the abdominal cavity. We'll be going looking at the organs in more detail, but the main ones, you can see the liver, It'll be relatively larger on the little guys. The liver develops a little bit in advance of the other organs. So you've got the liver. If you lift the liver up, you'll be able to see the stomach, the kind of floppy sac that's the stomach, with the sort of very worm-like or leech-like looking spleen along what's called the larger curvature of the stomach. And then, of course, coming off the stomach is going to be um, just intestines. Don't worry about small and large intestines on a pig because they're very different. Um, and back at the back body wall, Behind the serous lining, what is the parietal peritoneum, you can see the kidney. There's one on either side. There's that kidney. And this kidney, I've kind of uh, cut away the, the peritoneum so you can see, the, you can see the, the organ itself. So that's the abdominal cavity. What separates the abdominal cavity from the chest cavity? The diaphragm. 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 So see the diaphragm there? It like domes over the liver, just like that. It domes over the liver. Um, and you can also see it over here on the chest side. Okay, so you can see it on either side. So in the chest cavity, you know, you want to, there you can do a cut up the middle. Try to, you can try to cut back on the sides again to keep the diaphragm in place. It'll be harder on the little ones, but it doesn't matter. And then cut off to the sides and open up the chest cavity. When you do that, you're going to see the heart in the middle in its own little sac of this very wispy serous lining material called the pericardial sac. So the heart has its own sac of, 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 of serous lining around it. Remember, it started developing way up in front of the head. When the whole thing curled up, it gets inserted into the chest cavity. So it's got its own interesting developmental trajectory. But there you can see there's that serous line, that pericardial sac that we've cut away. You'll see that intact, that thin sac over the entire heart. There it is on that side, on that side. I've just cut it away so we can see the heart. And then on either side, we've got our other topic for today. Lungs. Lungs. Um, the serous linings, just real quick, um, in the chest cavity, they're the pleura. On the outside of the, on the right, this is the, this is the, the, the no, this Sorry. is the parietal part of the body, right? Mm -hmm. Muscle, skin, and bones. That's the parietal pleura. At the back, you'll see it connects. There's like a mesentery, and it comes onto the surface of the lungs. It's extremely tightly adhered. You can't really see it. When we, when we look at our dried lungs, you'll see that. And on the surface of the lungs, it would be the visceral pleura. Mm -hmm. okay. In the abdominal cavity, now it's peritoneum, right? Peritoneum. Abdominal or peritoneal cavity. Mm -hmm. This is the peritoneum on the outer part of the body, right? There's the, the muscular abdominal wall. That's parietal peritoneum, okay? Covering over the kidneys. At the back, it connects up to every part of the intestines. If I hold this loop of intestines up, you're going to see that mesentery with the blood vessels and the nerves going through it. I'll just hold it up so everybody can see the light shining through there. See the thin, wispy stuff with the light shining through it? Mm -hmm. That's mesentery, and you can see the, the blood vessels and nerves in there. Everybody see it? Mm -hmm. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's mesentery, and the visceral peritoneum is just, again, very tightly adhered on the surface of the intestines. 
it also covers, it covers everything. It covers the stomach, it covers the liver, it's even more tight on the liver, you just can't lift it off there, but trust me, it's there. Okay, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So parietal, so, mesentery, visceral. So um, covering the kidneys is parietal as well? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And the kidneys are unusual. They're, they work like a visceral organ, but they form in the outer part of the body. So, but we include them in A and P too because oh, the they're structurally, functionally visceral. Um, so what would be uh, the retro? Uh, the kidney. kidney. So the reason we say retroperitoneal is because back. it's at the back. Yeah, yeah the back. You, if you wanted to get there, you'd have to cut through the front, oh. open up the abdominal cavity, and cut through the back. Okay. All right? Mm -hmm. So um, to do your own little...